Hey guys, how you guys doing? Welcome to the channel. Thanks for taking the time out of your day to click on this thumbnail to watch this video that I've made for you guys today. Before we start the video though, I'd like to take a minute to ask you to please hit the thumbs up button, the subscribe button, and the notification button so that that way you get notified of any new video that I release. Today we're going to take a look at a Linux distribution that for lack of better words, is from the way, 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 way back machine. In fact, it's actually coined the Boomer distribution. PC Linux OS. And let's go to the website. You can find it at PCLinuxOS.com. Uh, as I said, it is coined the Boomer distribution, as you can see right here, where they've actually labeled it as the Boomer distribution. Uh, PC Linux OS is a OS that is an independent OS, but it uses the apt package management system from Debian, and it pulls from they have their own repositories, but they pull in their repositories from Fedora, OpenSUSE, Magia, and Mandriva. Uh, so they have 12,000 packages over there. It is a, it comes in KDE, Mate, and XFCE desktop environments, and then they have community releases. Uh, they would gladly accept your donations via Stripe right here. Um, it's been around for, since, like I said, 2003 is when they actually, uh, became a distribution i used it as one of my first ones it was in october 24 2003 when it was created um that's a day before my birthday <laughs> but, and uh, i remember when i first found when they first came on it was gorgeous it was really gorgeous back in the day so anyhow uh if you get a chance definitely give this one a try i highly recommend it uh, it's a, it just takes me back. So let's go ahead and close out of this and let's go through the install. So you, you, I booted into the live CD. I have it in my virtual machine. I have given it 10 gigs of RAM, six of my processor cores. So I'm going to click the install me. And this is the PC Linux installer right here. So I'm going to click next. Uh, we're going to do English. That is my language of preference. So I click next. My keyboard is the, uh, yep, we're going to click next on that. Uh, America, New York is not the time zone that I'm in, but I click on the Los Angeles one and I click next. Uh, yep, we're going to use a whole hard drive. Wait, 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 wait. Yes. Yes, we're going to create the partition table. Then I'm going to write Alex, and then our password is going to be a very strong password. You could never possibly guess it in a million years. This password will be used for root. You can change that after installation. That is good enough for me. And uh, they kind of, it's, it's an easy installer. I mean, it's not like uh, a complicated one, as you can see. And they kind of already have default things set, like using the same password for root and sudo. And so now it's installing. And I'm going to go ahead and pause the video. And then when it uh, is done, then we'll resume. Okay, and it finished the installation. It took roughly maybe five, ten minutes at best. Not even ten minutes. I'd say seven minutes at best. Uh, and so uh, we're going to go ahead and click yes, and we're going to reboot. I think we are, at least. There we go. There we go. So now I'm going to give it our password to log in. Uh, I downloaded the KDE uh, version of PC Linux OS, so the derivative. So that's why you see S DDM as a login manager and not like light DM or GDM. And so this is it. This is what you're greeted with when we log in. As you can see, uh, I'm going to go to the settings and I'm going to set this to the 1920 by 1080 uh, to make it look well. So I'm going to look for display and we're going to find 1920 by 1080 and right here at the top and we're going to hit apply and of course we are going to keep those changes yes we are now let's go back and one of the things i mean the appearance of uh, i'm going to hit the dark theme that's what we're going to do no twilight theme 
Uh, yes, we're going to apply it to everything. Desktop and window layout and appearances. Wow, there we go. Okay, so there we are. We're back to this now. It reloaded. Everything's good. And so now we have it dark. Uh, so we're going to configure our desktop wallpaper. We're going to see what they have for wallpapers. They only have the one default wallpaper. We're going to hit apply to that one. Hit okay. It's there. Now, we could also, we can open up, as you can see on a desktop, we have Dolphin. And let's go ahead and resize this. Let us go into here. Let's go to, it's usually user. And then we go to share. And then you can look in backgrounds and see. They've only got one in there for, in the XFCE one. And in the Mate one, they've got one there as well. As you can see, just a PC PC uh, Linux OS. Let's see if they got a wallpapers folder down at the bottom that usually comes with the standard KDE wallpapers. And it's all there <laughs> with different resolutions. So you only get this one background. So uh, you're going to have to go hunt for some backgrounds. So they, they don't, they're not making it very... Um, uh, uh, rice friendly or customization friendly to choose different backgrounds so as i said it's kde so you have your standard you have your dolphin um uh, uh shortcut on the desktop which i'm not a big fan of putting shortcuts on the desktop but we all know that then you have your panel at the bottom your standard kde panel now over here on the left is your app launcher as you can see here and then over on the right is your system tray along with your notification tray which has your standard notifications and any your your power management your night control your bluetooth control display configuration all that good stuff all in a squash panel and then you got your time and date when you click on it it should be interactive and it is so you can go months years days today i think if you click on it it'll nope it doesn't interact for you to actually uh put a actual like you know a to do or you know an event for the day so that is, it's very simple. The, it's clean as hell. It looks elegant. Um, it's fast and responsive, even in, even in a, you know, virtual machine, as you can see here, I mean, Firefox always takes a long time to load, but I mean, it's still pretty, pretty fast. It is, let's go ahead and take a look at Firefox, which is what it's using out of the box as its default web browser. It is 115.003. So that is the most up to date in their system. It is not the most current one. We're at 116, but it is a stable version. Uh, if you look at their categories, they have them a little differently and customized a little bit than the standard KDE ones. Uh, like I said, you have more applications, which has got your info center, which if you click on that, it should tell you all about your PC, what you're running. We're running Plasma 527, Frameworks 5.108, QT version is 515, kernel 6.4, so that's a, a modern day uh, kernel. It's actually on an X11 uh, 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 window manager so it's not Wayland support and as you can see down here it tells you that i'm in my uh actual uh virtual machine uh so that's under the more applications under archiving is your arc tool such as like you'd have in here like uh your file roller all that good stuff you know any different tools that you put in there like 7-zip p-zip all that would go under there under configuration this is definitely all of your configuration tools like i did there uh configure your computer uh which if you put in your password and you open it up, it's a pretty nice tool. It gives you your, your software manager, your sharing, like you can configure your, your FTP or a web server here. Network services, you can add these services and configure them as well. Hardware, you can do graphics here, like if you want to do a graphics server, a graphics card, virtual, you know, whatever you want to do, you can do, you can do that. Um, quit and then um uh you can browse and configure hardware you can do sound configuration here which i do believe it does use pipe wire um oh, no pulse audio sorry pulse audio uh and then um you can configure your mouse and keyboard printing and scanning and your ups power management and power monitoring system for system uh you have authentication that you can do for like creating passwords i think or changing passwords uh add and remove fonts uh, also manage system services right here. Uh, you can do your date and time here and your locals here. Administration tools, view and search system logs. So it's like checking out your journal CTL. Uh, you can open a console as administrator here. So it's basic root permission console. 
You can manage the users on your system, which is kind of like, it reminds me a lot like the control center on Windows. And they were pretty proactive on doing that kind of stuff. Uh, it's only got one user, which is me here, and I am using the Bash shell, and uh, you can actually create more, delete, whatever you want to do. So um, we're going to quit out of that. And then you can import uh, Windows documents and settings right here um for that uh, under network sharing obviously you can figure N nfs shares you can uh web dab shares and um window shares like samba and uh the share drives and that kind of stuff for local disks of course it's like you can manage partitions you can share your hard disk partitions so if you click on this it should open up it looks like a fork of um uh, uh g edit um which is what they are I don't know if they call it PC Linux Control Center. Yeah, it tells you about the control center. It doesn't actually tell you what the the tool is, but I think it's G edit. It's it's a fork of G edit, if I remember correctly. Um, standard standard uh, tool you can use to do that. Uh, so there is that. Um, under configuration, then you've got other things like KDE system settings, K wallet manager, NTFS configuration tool, uh, redo the bootloader, wireless regulatory domain. I mean, there's a lot of extra stuff they put in here that is for old school stuff, but it's got new school spins on it. Uh, you can also configure your firewall in here. Uh, under editors, it comes with KWrite, which is part of the KDE suite uh, at text editors. Uh, for file tools, you have, yep, Gparted. You, oh, they come with Ventoy right out of the gate installed, and they also have got um, uh, Dolphin, as you can see, already installed. Yep, this is Ventoy right here, uh, and it's 1.090, so it's, a, it's their stable version. Uh, so they have um, Ventoy in there. Under games, they have Isle Riot. For graphics, you have Gwenview and Spectacle. For internet, you've got Firefox web browser. In Office, they've got Ocular Software Center. They've got LibreOffice Manager. They've got the Synaptic Package Manager. And they've got VirtualBox completely installed already out of, the out of the box. That is one thing that PC Linux OS was known for, is that it was ready for you to do pretty much so anything you wanted to do, whether it was multimedia, whether it was wanting to, you know, like, spin up other uh isos in virtual box or if you wanted to do like browsing the web you know and 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 you know anything you wanted to do um pc linux was, was is made available for that it was supposed to be your one-stop shop all uh pc um uh uh Linux distribution. Now, as far as your Synaptic Package Manager, it's just like any other Synaptic Package Manager, only, like I said earlier, and they even announced it on the webpage, it pulls from their repos, but their repos are comprised of forks that they forked from OpenSUSE, Mandriva, Magia, Fedora, etc., etc. Uh, and so, under Internet, it's got Firefox, Office, the Software Center we went through, uh, sound, you've got MPV and Pulse Audio, Pavu Control installed right off the bat. Um, then under video, you've got just simply MPV installed, no VLC. Now, that is PC Linux OS in a nutshell. It's very simple. It is very clean it is very neat it is very organized it is well done has been for literally decades i am talking 30 years practically 30 plus and it is bar none one of the most rock solid ones underrated under looked or sorry overlooked distributions out there a lot i don't know that a lot of people talk about it i don't know that a lot of people even know of it but it is a great distribution for those of you guys who are um anti-system d i believe it, it runs on system d uh it does use system d so uh, you may not like it but those of you guys that don't have a problem with system d hey give it a try see what it, see what it, see what it's like spin it up tell me what you think leave a comment down below 
Also, if you got any suggestions for any other distributions you'd like us or the channel to look at, please go ahead and leave it in the, in the comments down below. Also, don't forget to go to our Discord server and check out our Discord uh, and join over there if you're not already in it. Uh, we got lots of cool stuff over there, lots of cool people over there. Uh, it's a very mellow, cool, easy, laid-back kind of server. Um, that's it. So, guys, I'm going to tell you, as always, you guys keep doing what you do. Keep on Linuxing. Stay blessed. And above all, have a great damn day. And I'll see you in the very next video.